Well, thank you, Paige, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Julie and I spend our professional lives helping boards and managers navigate through the wide variety of decisions they face throughout the year, and especially at budget time. And today's budget time for about 84% of you. So today's program is designed to help you make wise decisions that are going to lead you and your association towards an improved future. And that starts with strategy. Start with knowing your objectives first before diving into the task of executing. You don't want to be caught executing the wrong plan or a bad plan. And in our experience, the majority of boards see the budget as just a task to execute, diving in without a good vision for what success looks like or just trying to replicate the prior year. But it's our observation and our experience that this type of uh, execution causes associations to struggle financially because they've minimized their budgets to the point that they're suffering and not thriving. And that's especially clear here in 2020 where associations, those ones with little or no margin, are finding it hard to deal with the cash flow problems that are coming up or new expenses. So an effective budget strategy or an effective budget process is going to be especially important here in 2020 to navigate through all the COVID-19 changes and provide a stable financial foundation for next year. Now we're going to make this an interactive presentation today, stopping in the middle to answer audience questions. We're going to start with some audience participation right here at the start. So grab your mouse and click me the hands raised icon in your control panel that looks like the one that you see on screen if you're ready for us to kick off today's presentation. So looking for hands raised. Very good. I'm seeing hands raised up and down the list. Okay, I'm going to click hands down. Thank you. And let's get going. So, Julie, we're going to talk about strategy. What are the attributes of a successful budget? Well, thanks, Robert, for having me on for another year that we do our budgeting for success. It's always a lot of fun, always, always. So let's talk about the first attribute for success. Number one, number one attribute for success, success is the association has enough cash to function to fund its reserves appropriately and to pay its operating expenses appropriately. Remember, a board member's primary responsibility is to preserve, protect, maintain, and enhance the common elements of the community, not just for this time, but also into the future. And that means we cannot keep it status quo. We cannot make our goal to uh, just keep assessments static for years. That is not a good goal. Costs go up, everything goes up. Of course, the assessments need to go up. Now, the, for the manager, for all you managers out there, your task is to assist the board in the kind of the mental process of this in the beginning to uh, let them know how smoothly other associations run when they have the appropriate uh, funding for operating and reserves. Uh, if they're avoiding I guess I want to say if they avoid financial scarcity where an association has to decide to, you know, hold off an extra month to pay that bill so we can pay another one, that's not a good thing and it usually creates quite a bit of strife, sometimes within the community and definitely on the board of directors. Now, let's talk just a minute about something new here and this is the COVID-19 effects. Now, especially for communities that are, well, I would say any any place where you're based where you are back in shutdown again, California comes to mind. I think Oregon actually went that way as well, and parts of Texas, that kind of thing. This is a deal, and cash, your cash flow will be a matter of survival. It always is, but even more particular, in particular now. Just think, especially if your association has amenities that have had to open and now shut down, and now they have to reopen again, there was always a cost to that whether it's the administrative costs for the persons doing uh, you know, the work, it's, whether it's the management company or labor costs, if you are in-house and have a staff uh, in there, there may be protective gear that has to be purchased, extra cleaning stuff that has to be purchased, that kind of thing. This is just, uh, this is almost, we're in an uncharted territory here, so 
we're going to talk about having a, a little bit later about having a, a contingency for this type of, of uh, expenses. Now, and we know everyone, every association member and all the board members, everyone is being inconvenienced by this. And I think it's okay to let everyone know we're kind of in this boat together. We're all going to have this bumpy ride. So you as board members and you as managers, you need to know your actual numbers and the money it costs. And you need to communicate these relative uncertainties to your owners. Now, the next one I want to uh, cover is uh, for is that you don't want to guess on anything. You absolutely have to know your numbers. How are your delinquencies compared to last year? What additional expenses did you incur due to COVID-19? And what has happened to your other expenses? Are there any expense line items that are down and others that are up compared to last year? You, you got to review your year-to-date budget and see what's happening. And you must deal with the truth of the matter. There is no wishful thinking and no finger crossing that this won't go up or that won't go up or we're going to hope it goes down so we don't have to uh, raise our assessments or even, even nominally, even nominally. The next thing you want to do is you want to build the expectation among owners that there will be minor changes from year to year because the board has to respond to the reality of expenses. No one's expenses go down, your insurance, and premium, insurance premiums aren't going down, electricity isn't going down, water isn't going down. And so all of the association has to pay these expenses. So for people to think that costs are going to remain static is, is just a fantasy. We have to deal with the truth. The world changes around us and your annual budget must reflect it. And lastly, how do we get that work? How do we get that work for us? How do we get it to work for us and our communities and our boards and, and, and our management staff as well? Communicate. Communicate is the big thing from one end to the other. There is no such thing as too much communication. Communicate regularly, communicate on multiple platforms. That would be if you have a newsletter, whether it's hard copy or electronic, uh, e-blasts, uh, some associations are doing uh, gang texts that you could even have as simple as having it on a bulletin board, actually, but put it in all those places because people will see it when they're ready to see it. Remember this, folks, the first rule of marketing and you're in marketing here is seven times in front of someone and they see it. So communicate regularly. You are you're, you're basically selling the community on the budget as it comes up and you want to do it over a period of time, not just at the end when, oh gosh, we've got to raise assessments 8%. So communicate regularly. You're, you're almost telling the story of the finances of the community and that's a story in a good way, not a made up way. So I think that those are the biggest attributes, Robert. Yeah, let me uh, recap in my voice here. Um, what you've been talking about is knowing your numbers, giving the association the cash it needs to function, and we all know things are different here in 2020, and that's going to make it especially important that you know your numbers, because to be able to project forward into next year, you need to know what ground you're standing on now. And that means that there's no wishful thinking. Uh, owners need to be paying the true cost, not fictitious cost. I like the way that that guy was not only crossing his fingers, but he had his eyes closed. That's what we want to yeah. avoid. Um, we want to be budgeting for true costs. And by now, you should have some pretty real numbers about what has been happening in March, April, May, and June. And train owner expectations. Hopefully, you can be building the expectation that there's going to be annual adjustments. We live in a time of change here. And make sure the owners are aware. Like Julie said, communicate at many opportunities when you sense there's going to be an increase. Um, communicate that the new hand sanitizer stations were purchased. Uh, the new this was purchased. Uh, the, the doorman um, out in front of the association has additional hours. Uh, those kinds of things. Tell them what's going on so you're building the uh, story. Okay, uh, we talked about um, attributes. Let's talk about process now. Um, what's the indicators or the attributes of a successful budget process? Well, I think the first and probably the most important attribute, well, or right up there with being realistic about everything, is to start early in the process. And if you managers out there haven't started your budgets yet, you need to be doing it. I actually like to tell people to start budgets as early as June, because especially if you have a portfolio, you could have eight, 10, 11 budgets to prepare. That's eight, 10, 11 uh, uh, um, 
board boards or eight, 10, 11 treasurers and eight, 10, 11 finance committees. Do you have a so, problem with number nine, Julie? I know. I, yes, I do. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud. It's <laughs> so, so this is how many you have. I mean, so to start early in the process gives you that amount of time. And I, I can hear the eyeballs rolling uh, from there, but, but trust me, I always, throughout my career as a manager, I always started early. I was never, ever sorry about it. And then what you want to do is you want to take, even if you're early, you want to take the last eight to 12 months of financials. And that way you can get a really good picture of a year's worth of expenses and income. The next thing you want to do is make sure and do your homework, do your research. You want to look at the year to date budget. You want to know what is over and what is under budgeted. And, and also, Remember to be sensitive during this time of COVID-19. Uh, you, you get information all the time about it. You know what your state is doing. You try to keep up on it. You might have to have some sort of a contingency uh, for COVID, whether it's for opening and closing uh, your pool or your clubhouse, or like you said, for the hand sanitizer stations, whatever it is. Next, you wanna pay really close attention to your delinquencies and your reserve contributions. So think about what did the association not do when they wanted or needed to do it and why did you not do that was it a cash flow problem but so these are all the things you want to look at you want to look big picture at all of these issues as you start the budgeting process next thing for you managers especially or if you're the board who member who does it is to prepare the preliminary budget this means things are going to need adjusting. And remember, it's preliminary. It's not written in stone. You're going to, as a manager, if the manager's doing it, you're going to hand it off to the board or the finance committee, and they're going to play around with it. And that's great. Give it to them. Let them work it out. It needs to be adjusted based on reality or maybe new board policies or, again, the COVID, whatever it is. You're just, they just need time to digest it, process it and maybe even process the political reality that you've recommended an increase in assessments and they know they're gonna to have to do it. So that's a good thing. And the last thing you wanna do is begin the process of communicating with the owners about the budget. It's perfectly fine to maybe putting things in the newsletter or on your e-blasts as you're talking about other things as the board is working on the budget and it's looking like we're going to have an increase in expenses due to this and this. We're mindful that people don't want to pay more, but we certainly have to take care of the common assets of the community. So uh, always keep in contact. And one other thing you wanna do is provide margin for unknowns within your budget. Again, delinquencies or surprises, like, like the COVID surprise, right? <laughs> and then make sure and distribute your budget on time, which depending on where you are, that's by statute or by your governing documents or both. Now remember, don't expect everything to be perfect. It's not gonna be perfect and budgets will never be perfect, but you do your best and you move forward. Yeah, thanks. Um, Julie, we've got uh, another summary slide here and it all seems like it boils down to starting early, six months in advance. And what do we have? 80 some percent of people here working on December 31st uh, fiscal year end. So it's a lot of people in attendance here in today's program. Start early. Budgets are gonna take especially even more time here in 2020. And it's not just the budget, it's those communication steps. And then right. gather the facts, do your homework, make sure you know your numbers, prepare that draft budget, uh, start to get the feeling of what it's gonna look like, maybe start communicating those draft uh, budget numbers to the homeowners and then finish it. But then again, you said it very clearly, there's um, don't expect perfect. And boy, did we learn things happen that we don't expect here in 2020. So get it done, get it pointed in the right direction and get it out because a budget that you're just sitting on or a budget that's late, that uh, doesn't reflect well on the association or the uh, board's leadership. Well, um, Paige, we have a scheduled Q&A time here. So um, can I get you to MC some of the audience questions that have come up so far? Of course. Okay, let's do this first question. Should a pandemic line item be added to 2021 budget or reserves? If so, how to estimate amount? Well, I'll take the part on the operating budget. Uh, you know, if you already have a contingency line in your operating budget, I would say that you can just add it into there. I mean, you don't have to put 
pandemic, but just add a little bit more into contingency, maybe 5%, maybe 6%, something like that, because we're really, we're all grappling around in the dark here, but you do have a little bit of history, uh, you know, over the last few months. So do the best you can with that and maybe just, uh, just put it as contingency or a little more to your current contingency fund. Yeah, <clears throat> on the reserve side of things, I don't think the roof cares or the painting cares or the asphalt cares about uh, COVID-19, so the reserves shouldn't change too much. We did do a webinar earlier this year. You can find it on our website under webinars called Reserves to the Rescue, where we talk about how an association can perhaps move some projects around or maybe move some reserve cash around. So that's a good resource for uh, associations grappling with that side of things. But in general, I expect that the reserve project will probably be about the same as pre-COVID-19. Okay, let's answer one more question here. Is there a rule of thumb regarding what percentage of the HOA dues should be um, allocated to reserve funding? Yeah, let me uh, jump in on that one. Uh, Julie talked a moment ago about a contingency factor that uh, whatever it is at your association, you want to add a few more points to it, maybe 5% or so more. Um, and you're starting to think about, wow, what are our big budget line items? Well, reserves is one of those big budget line items. We commonly see associations needing anywhere from 15 to 40% of their total budget going towards reserves. A uh, common number is something in the range of 25%. And what we find is that's very um, consistent, whether it's a planned development HOA or a townhome, a mid-rise condo, or a high-rise. Um, it tends to be somewhat scalable with the association's overall budget. So um, a good figure of merit is something in the 25% range. Okay, great. I'll let you get back to it. Cool. Okay. Um, next section of the program is problems to avoid. Um, Julie, uh, your area here, how can we start on this? What problems are there to avoid? Well, the first problem to avoid is pursuing the wrong goal. The goal in a community association is never to minimize assessments or you know, keep assessments static for years at a time. That is not a point of pride. You need to have a realistic goal on that. And the realistic goal is to be able to meet all of your financial obligations, operating and reserves. Everything goes up, folks. Assessments can go up too. And the second one, here's another really interesting one, especially for self-managed associations, but it does happen in others as well, is you want to avoid the lack of institutional knowledge. And so by that, I mean, when someone has been, you know, the association has been going along and they've been making their budgets and, and, uh, and then people have done research and they know this has cost this two years ago and that cost that three years ago. When that type of information doesn't get written down or, or placed in files somewhere, it goes away. Your institutional or corporate knowledge goes away. So you always want to try and be mindful of keeping that type of information readily available when you're preparing budgets, because otherwise you just have you have no no knowledge, you have no no background on the things that you're doing. And a lot of associations, when especially if they're self-managed, if they have a complete turnover in board members, whew, that knowledge is just gone and without uh, documentation notes of some sort, it just leaves that board in a, in a real terrible situation. Yeah, Julie, you mentioned that just a moment ago, guessing. And this is an area where you shouldn't have to guess. You you knew that expense from two years ago. You knew that expense when you had the big snows five years ago or something like that. And it's just creating a problem for the association that's very avoidable. It is. It is. So who's ever the keeper of the records, whether it's your management company or someone on the board, just make sure the records are kept. It's not something to just to let it go out of your mind. The next one, a uh, problem to avoid, I would say, is, is not planning ahead, like doing things at the very last minute, because everything takes more time than you think. Uh, there's always some emergency, you in management, you know this, as I call it, community management is life on the bomb squad. You walk into your office, everything is great. You pull up your, uh, we, you had your phone off, so you didn't look, but you pull up everything on your PC and all of a sudden poof, your inbox is full and your day is shot, life on the bomb squad. So if you plan for that, if you think something's going to take you two weeks, it's probably going to take you three and a half over a period of time to accomplish you know, this particular type of task. So that's what I said, not planning ahead. Everything takes more time than you think it does. 
And for the associations, you know, typically if they're managed, the manager prepares the preliminary budget and then hands it off to the treasurer or the finance committee, and then it goes to the board, right? Well, if you are an association, self-managed or not, and you have a budget and finance committee, uh, make sure, or try to make sure, because I know it's hard, volunteers are hard to get, that you have someone who is heading up that committee who is suited to doing so. I mean, I know we're always at the mercy of who our volunteers are, but we want to do our best about putting volunteers in their right positions. Like a, a, a retired CPA is much better on the finance committee than on the social committee. It's just pretty much true. That's where their skill set is. So you want to be mindful of that. And you also want to be mindful of, uh, of, of the resources available to you. There are professional organizations, uh, so there's CAI, uh, our national professional organizations, several, many, many local chapters all over the US. They have luncheons. There are online resources from CAI National. Most, many, many of them are free to, to take a look at this type of thing. So uh, be aware that there are places people can get information. I, myself, I produce uh, online classes for board members. And so uh, easy to take, you just go in, click on the things and off you go, right? So there's always types of education. So keep yourself up to date with those type of things. And the next thing I will tell you is, is there's when there's missing information, it's very difficult to put your budgets together. I mean, that kind of goes back to the other point of institutional knowledge. If you are trying to do a budget with no year-to-date expenses, no year-to-date income, and no reserve study, you're not going to be putting together the most cogent document, if you will say, because you're because you're working in the blind. You're like that guy with his fingers crossed and his eyes closed. So you don't want to keep going that way. What you want to do is make your budget estimates based in fact. Always know your big categories of expenses, which would be, of course, utilities, management, landscape, you know, uh, whatever other type of things you have to do. And uh, oh, insurance, that's always a big one and your reserve contribution, as Robert said, if that is 25 to 30 or 40% of your budget, that's a big expense, you gotta be prepared there. And lastly, as a part two of this, don't just repeat what you did last year and the year before and just throw the things in there. You really have a duty as board members, even if someone else initially prepared it for you, to know what goes into those numbers. So don't just, you know, if you just go from one year to the next and everything's the same, the mistake that was made in the budget four or five years ago is still being played out five years later. So that's the next thing you, you want to always do is, is it's start from scratch, but have the right information in front of you. Great. I've got the uh, summary slide here. And for those of you listening, you might feel that we're saying it multiple times. So we're saying it multiple times because it's an important point. We don't want associations out there pursuing the wrong goal. The right goal is to be budgeting like someone responsible for paying the bills. You want to collect the right amount of money to be able to pay the bills. And that means setting assessments where they need to be, not where you want them to be. Um, the other thing is forgetfulness, uh, institutional knowledge, or the marked up budgets from the last year with notes. What did we do? Why did we do it? Lack of foresight, making sure that uh, you are taking enough time and you can't manufacture additional time. So start early, even though we're in a bit of uncertainty here, um, pack some uncertainty and plan some uncertainty into the budget for next year. Um, unsuccessful delegation is a problem. Make sure you have people that know how to deal with time, deal with numbers, and also uh, we talk about uh, the communication aspect. Make sure that they are communicating to uh, the people who are responsible for uh, owners, um, getting it into the newsletter, getting it into the, um, might be the bulletin board out front, knowing that you have the right pieces accounted for. And those right pieces are all the information. Um, you can't make wise decisions if your eyes closed, fingers crossed. So set yourself up for success, get the information you need, look backwards in time, and I think it's like those TV commercials um, about retirement accounts. Uh, future performance or past performance is no f indication of future. Guarantee of future. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Best. But yeah. it's the best chance you've got is looking mm -hmm. at the past numbers and being able to at least project wisely. Okay, let's turn the corner into helpful hints. Julie, what are some helpful hints you can share for boards and managers? 
Well, the first thing is keep your eye on the ball, okay? I mean, the ball is to do what? The ball is to produce a budget that is as close as possible to the exact needs of the community operationally and having to do with reserves. Again, board members, your duty is to preserve, protect, maintain, and enhance the common elements of the community, and that includes current and into the future. And also, always remember to provide a little bit of margin, just a little bit of margin because surprises happen. The COVID was the big surprise. Next, you want to communicate more than once. Communicate early and often, as I like to say. And, and just remember this. it's Yes, it's a budget, but it's not really just a budget. It's the financial story that needs to be told of the community. And it's a true story. And when you start telling people the information, of, here's how, here was the, um, Here's how we got to this number for landscape. Here's what happened with our insurance costs, et cetera, et cetera. People want to, they need to know. And you're much better off as board members to communicate. There is no such thing as too much on this. People want to see what's going on. You are being incredibly transparent by doing this. And what's the number one thing that makes people distrust their homeowners association? Their, their perception that there's a lack of transparency, especially when it comes to the financials. So when you publish this type of information continually, people get a sense of confidence in the board. They feel like they are in good hands. And that's what you want. It's also easier to sell your budget. Remember, put it everywhere. Message boards, electronic communication, however your association does it. And the next one is, don't forget, again, start early. Start early. It's really, really important. I know I've said it three times now, I think, but everything takes longer than you think. When you have to cram it in over the last you know, month before it has to be mailed out, it's incredibly stressful and you may not make your deadline. You don't want that to happen either. Uh, here's the big one is, is you know, have a long-term perspective. I mean, I'm sitting here with my, if you could see me, my arms are like in, in like a big global, I've got a big reach here. Have the long-term perspective, not just where we are right now. This year sets you up for success for next year. You're going to have particular problems or situations, particularly with your reserves, that took years to create. And it will take years for the association to fix it. Put yourself on that path. But don't expect to solve a multi-year problem in one year. So just have that multi-year perspective. If your board is the board that is going to take the bull by the horns and write the financial ship of the association. Just remember the reality of it, but keep that's back to keeping your eye on that ball. That's our goal. That's what we're going to do. Uh, let's see, deal with the truth. I guess that's the next one. Deal with the truth. It's like, it's like the movie. You can't handle the truth. Well, you board members, you can handle the truth and you must. If you fail to learn the lessons, the, the lessons of, of history, you're doomed to repeat them, right? That's what everyone says. So, Bad I think that's budget. Churchill. It's what? I think that's Winston Churchill. I th I'm sure it is. <laughs> or, or Santiana, that yeah. one too, I think. Anyway, to just and what I mean by this is that if bad budgets from the prior year, if you just use them as a template, are going to get replicated because, you know, someone just didn't want to do their job. And by the way, boards, if the management does that, that doesn't matter. It's your job to ensure that it reflect that the budget reflects what the community needs. Deferred maintenance, special assessments, all of these things need to be looked at and dealt with. And lastly, and here's one we need to really think about. You need to budget for the majority of the owners, meaning, and you need to budget for, well, think of it this way, for the corporation, not for individuals. Um, it's your job as the board member to do so. And unfortunately, what happens sometimes is that boards, and I understand, but you have to have empathy for people. However, boards will not raise assessments because they know that two or three owners in the association will not be able to afford an increase and will have to move. That's unfortunate. I'm sorry that happens, but that is a reality of life. And you must budget for the corporation as a whole. That's your fiduciary duty. It's your fiduciary duty to do so. You know, as I, I like to say, it's my husband and I, we live in, have a big house. We live out in the rural suburbs, as I say, so we're on an acre and we take care of the whole thing, right? All just the two of us take care of everything. Well, there's going to come a time where we can't do that and we will have to downsize. So we will not get to live here all that time. And it's not anything bad. It just is what it is. So you kind of got to think of it that way. I understand it's difficult, but that has to be where your mindset is. 
Thanks, Julie. Um, again, just thinking about those hints alone, I was scratching some notes here, and it's our presentation, so uh, good stuff. Um, it's the board members that need to implement it, the managers that need to coach the boards through this, but know the goal, focus on the goal. And remember the human factors, uh, it takes communication, it takes multiple times to get the message across, to get the volunteers going, to get the people's hearts set for any budget changes. It takes, that takes time, start early, learn the steps, go through the steps, have the multi-year perspective, seeing that, yeah, uh, 2020 was a bumpy year. We're gonna tell a lot of stories about this year from a long time into the future. But deal with the truth of the matter, know what your numbers are, know what the expenses have been, and then budget for the sustainability of the corporation. Um, don't let the entire association get held back because of uh, the people who own unit number 13. It may be time for them to find more appropriate housing that suits their budget. So you do your budget, you do, you do your job, budget for the association, and let that family do their job and budget to see if they can remain in the association uh, once the assessments are set where they need to be. Okay, and um, everyone, give me a hands raised if you're ready for a new tool that we are offering here this year. Hands raised if you're ready to see a new tool. Very good, okay, thank you. I'm gonna click hands down. And I wanna tell you about a new tool that is out there for budget planning. It's called Uplanet, and it's something we're offering at Association Reserves to uh, basically enhance the reserve study process to help you deal with adjustments and test and document your plan. And I'm gonna pull it up here. and uh, show you, um, actually this is a, a view from a portfolio manager. When they log into our client center, they see all their properties listed and it's pretty normal. Um, they will see their documents, the reserve study, the executive summary through the years, but new this year is you plan it. And it's a tool that allows the client to literally look at their reserve information. And you can see this association here, we'll call it Sample Condo Association. Uh, the board sees the reserve say, and they say, you know, what do the numbers look like if we make some changes? So let's take their asphalt, and uh, they say, um, let's move that out. Let's not do that in the initial year. Um, delay one year. And so instead of that happening in 2021, it's now going to happen in 2022. Let's say they adjust a price on something, or actually the mailboxes, say they are looking just fine. Let's push those out a couple more years. It was five years remaining. Um, you're all seeing how fast I can type, uh, but things like that. You can make changes to your plan. You can say, hey, um, we thought we were going to have $265,000. I don't think with the extra COVID expenses, we're going to have that. Let's say 245,000. What do our numbers look like? And you can see it's still pretty well balanced situation, but as um, we have so many associations now thinking, is this really a good time for us to be fully funding? We know we get the benefits of being well-funded at about 70%. So can we um, tighten up on our reserve contributions? See, uh, in the reserve say, they said 49.90. Let's see what happens if we can go down to 4,500. And this is what a board can do here with a U Planet. Actually, that's not a bad guess. Um, you can see the percent funded goes a little bit up, a little bit down. And you can check the cash flow in those years. Let's look at the cash flow chart. I'm going to try to do this quick. Yeah, that might be a little lower than they want to go. Or you can look at the actual numbers. Let's see, where was that? The low cash flow, 80 grand. Um, yeah, so the board can say that's lower than we want to go. So let's 
test 4600. Again, this is exactly what a board can do when they're trying to see and make the reserves fit. And uh, 46 is a good number. 4700 also. Actually, that may be the sweet spot. And so you can publish this and say, this is our compromise. This is what we're going to do as we react, as we call an audible. But I just want to show you this tool. It's a um, nice new addition that we have here in 2020 to the budget process. It's free with every completed reserve study. And we've made access available for $149 for all others. Um, Uplanet uh, helps boards solve the what do we do now? We want to try to make this square peg fit into a round hole. Budgeting is going to be hard in 2020, and we want to give you an additional tool to see what happens again so you're not forced into a guessing situation. Well, we, um, we know that budgeting is hard, and getting the right amount of funds together so the association can thrive is hard. So we wanted to take this time for our webinar here, Association Reserves and Adam and Inc. to set you up with an improved chance for success. At uh, Julie's company, adamand-inc.com, you can uh, search for additional help, specifically sign up for her newsletter, learn more about the consulting and training that she offers for management companies and managers on a number of different uh, management and communication issues. How do I do a newsletter? Don't you have some templates? What do you recommend? That's all right in uh, Julie's uh, wheelhouse. And at Association Reserves, you can find us at reservestudy.com. There you can see a number of webinars, uh, articles, all things to help you have success in your future. We want um, you to be able to scroll down at the bottom to sign up for our email list so you can see future webinars like this one where there's also a place to click to get a reserve say proposal for your association well julie and i have spent a number of years helping associations avoid problems and guiding them towards a safe and successful future so on behalf of the both of us i thank you for joining us today and i hope that you've learned some budget strategy tips that help you move forward towards a more peaceful and productive future. And with that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Paige, who will handle some additional Q&A time. Paige.